look at how powerful the storm was. Through social media, you are part of the Storm Track weather team tonight, sharing incredible videos just like these. The sun might be shining again this evening, but don't let down your guard just yet. We're still tracking the chance for possible flash flooding. First alert coverage is only on ABC7. Plus, we have several crews out in the field this evening, tracking out all the damage reported within the last few hours. Plus, an update on the traffic conditions. We showed you this at 4 o'clock. We'll show you how things are different tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Estela Casas. And I'm Rick Cabrera. ABC 7 at 6 with first alert coverage starts now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the borderland. This is ABC 7 at 6. Showers and thunderstorms across the area. And you can see some of the storms off in the distance. And we'll be uh, looking at storm track Doppler radar and tracking some of that activity across the area. We are tracking some severe weather yet developing out there in uh, Hutsmouth County. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weather alerts which are occurring across the area. And you notice we do have a severe thunderstorm warning until 645. Uh, right here in Hutspeth County, just north of you folks in Sierra Blanca, this is a very strong cell. It is severe. We're going to take a look at Doppler radar. We're going to track this storm, take a look at some of the other storms across the area. That's all coming up. Doppler, thank you very much. And you at home are part of our Storm Track weather team sharing incredible video like this out of Sparks. Take a look. Benny Garcia shows us how powerful all the flood water is this evening, and it quickly turned muddy. East El Paso County got slammed with a heavy downpour just a few short hours ago. Just after 3 o'clock, Doppler Dave and Nicole Gomez cut into regular programming with a tornado warning out near southeast El Paso County. That warning is no longer in effect, but viewers Nancy Cedillo Torres, well, she recorded this video near Horizon. And Norma Varela Perez shared a few pics of the storm in San Alazario this afternoon. It shows a storm brewing up above. She shot these just before Doppler and Nicole were back on ABC 7 at 4 with live first alert coverage. Amia Marin's video from Socorro gives us another perspective on how serious the storm was for a while. Hail and buckets of rain quickly led to flooded neighborhoods. Roads were washed out and it all happened in a matter of minutes. And one of those areas now left with a big cleanup tonight is Horizon City. To the east of El Paso, it's surrounded by desert and mounds of sand. So with the downpour like we saw today, you can just imagine what happens. ABC 7's complete coverage continues with Ashley Rodriguez. You are not going to believe this, but I'm on the side of Horizon Road. And right now I'm standing thigh deep in just tons and tons of grape-sized hail. All this stuff came crashing down around 3.30, and we have video of the aftermath. Residents tell me they saw the gloomy skies. They thought it was going to rain, but they expected nothing like what happened. All of a sudden, hail came pounding on their roofs. Other residents I spoke to were so concerned about their cars and the damage that all this hail could potentially cause that they ran outside to cover their cars with blankets. One man learned the hard way just how much hail was coming down. He said that it came down painfully pummeling him and he even has welts. Residents were just shocked that this much hail could come down this fast. It seemed like it, it was snowing. It really did. It started hailing. We started trying to cover our cars with blankets so that we didn't get much hail damage. It's crazy here in El Paso. One day it's nice, next thing you know it's snowing. It actually looks like snow. I'm on the side of Horizon Road, but all this hail extends to the right lane. And right now, crews have it blocked off. Emergency crews are on scene helping to direct traffic. As of now, blue skies, sunny skies. You would never have thought that this much hail came down just an hour ago. But it's bound to melt. So if you are in the area, drive safe. The roads are slick. Back to you. Ashley, very good advice. Thank you very much. And Traffic in that same area is also affected tonight. More than two hours after the rain stopped falling, floodwaters forced Mercy Cruz to block off parts of Gateway West near Harnos and Horizon. TxDOT aimed to have the water off the road by 6 o'clock, but the time is now 
603, and you can see it is still causing quite a backup. Again, that water causing some problems for cruiser who have blocked off. That's near mile marker 37 in Far East El Paso County. And Rick, the new images are flooding our newsroom, and we appreciate it. Brulee tweeted this video from Socorro of the Hail. Also use the hashtag ABC7 first alert when she sent it out. Thank you very much. Powerful images giving us all a better idea of what happened today. So amazing video. Your exclusive mountain cam up on the Franklin Mountains gives you an angle of the storm you can't find anywhere else. This was recorded just before 4 o'clock and it shows the sun quickly moving back into the picture. That shot backs of what many of you who experienced the storm firsthand are saying tonight that it came and went in a matter of minutes. We have storm tracker Jerry Nakara also live in Horizon City tonight. And Jerry, tell us what you saw today. Rick Estella, we were in Socorro about two hours ago. And once we got near the uh, Saragossa International Bridge, the rain started coming down really hard. Once we got into Socorro, the roads, you could already see they were flooding. And then within five minutes, the hail just started coming down. There was pea-sized hail, marble-sized hail. We actually found an elderly woman who was walking on the side of the road carrying some grocery bags. We had to pull over and, and take her uh, right home. Uh, it was bad. There was, uh, we, we pulled over at a gas station and there was about 12 people just huddled uh, under the under the gas station, um, just trying to look for cover. The the roads, the sides of the roads were really flooded out there. People were uh, trying to avoid those uh, those flooded areas. Uh, it cleared up. It's it's cleared up now. I could actually look towards Socorro and I could see it is cleared up. Now out here in Horizon City, we actually went to Montana Vista and made our way back to Horizon City. Canazo Road is closed, and we also want you to know that this, where I'm standing, this is actually a road. Uh, take a look at it. The ice uh, from the, the hail is just here in sheets. It's in chunks, so they have closed off the road. So if you're going to be out in the areas of Socorro and Horizon, uh, just drive safe. Uh, Rick Estelle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss it back to you guys. Wow, that's pretty amazing out there. Jerry, thank you very much. And not just El Paso County getting hit by a powerful afternoon storm. No tornado warning like we saw to the east, but up in Las Cruces, People we caught up with describe it as something they had not seen in a long time. Take a listen. There's a lot of holes. There really are. If you look around, it's you're playing through a little minefield. Lots of little craters. Little so. divots everywhere, but it's still manageable. We're still having a good time playing. This is video our crew with the New Mexico Mobile Newsroom shot this afternoon at the Sonoma Ranch Golf Course. The video speaks for itself. We also called authorities there to get specifics on the damage, and police say... They responded to numerous car wrecks and traffic controls because of few streets washed out like the Trivis and Main Street. And again, this golf course. Damage to the clubhouse and to the whole course in general. Uh, we had damage on most of the greens and tee boxes. Um, that was where most of our damage was sustained. We had a little bit of building damage, but nothing too crazy. And we showed you yesterday some homes in that area had skylights all busted out from Saturday's storm. New at 6 in the last hour, we learned one person was hit hard enough in the head by hell to require medical attention. For the rest, it's all about insurance claims now. ABC 7's Jamie Warren is live from our New Mexico mobile newsroom. Jamie. Rick and Estella, like you said, neighborhoods here in the Sonoma Ranch area, um, well, they experienced a lot of damage over the past weekend, so much that Las Cruces was proclaimed a catastrophe area. And that's according to Las Cruces Mayor Ken Miyagashima's company, Farmers Insurance. Miyagashima tells me they've only declared Las Cruces a catastrophe area three times during his 30 years with the company. And this is some of the damage left over from Saturday's storm. Starting today, Miyagashima tells me a group of adjusters from across the country will be giving estimates to Las Cruces who suffered from storm damage. It just it allows more resources to be sent here. Uh, we usually have on the ground on average day six or seven adjusters. Uh, by having this uh, catastrophe code, uh, we've probably tripled that amount so that policyholders can have access to adjusters on a more quicker and timely basis. And people here in the Sonoma Ranch area are still cleaning up the damage to their homes and to their cars. Miyagashima tells me the best way to be prepared is to make sure your insurance is up to date. That way, you're prepared when something like this happens. Live from Las Cruces with our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, Jamie Warren, ABC 7. ABC 7 began live coverage of what we saw tonight during the 3 o'clock hour. Then at 4 o'clock, live reports from Jerry Nahara showing us the immediate damage. And by 5, Ashley Rodriguez 
joined our complete coverage. And through it all, Storm Tracker Nicole Gomez and Doppler Dave has been side by side keeping us in the know. And here is Doppler Dave and Nicole with the very latest continuing coverage of our first alert. That's right, Rick. And we couldn't do it without the viewers uh, helping us, sending us photos, giving us updates on what's taking place in the area, especially out towards the east where we had that tornado warning and those strong storms and even some hail. But let's take a look at some of the viewer photos on Weather C, give you an idea of what that storm looked like. We actually have a picture. This is from Janelle. Who's, who sent us this picture of a wall cloud. And you can see the dark cloud there. And that's pretty much the area where we had that tornado warning. And Sarah Evans also sent this from the far east side. It looks like snow, but that's actually hail that uh, is pretty much sitting in her, in her front yard. Edgar also sent us this. And he even looks like he's keeping it as a souvenir with the hail in his little baggie there. And one more photo here from Melanda, who also sent us the hail that's pretty much uh, surrounding her neighborhood and the area streets. But Doppler, quiet right now here in El Paso, but the potential for storms to develop tonight, it's still probable. Uh, yes, we still have the potential of seeing some severe thunderstorms. In fact, we continue with one right now out in Hutspeth County. This is a severe thunderstorm warning just north of you folks in Sierra Blanca. Now, notice on our radar system, uh, we are showing some signs Signs of rotation here. Uh, that storm we'll have to watch closely. Right now, it is a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, but certainly notice some of the colors there. We could be producing some pretty good sized hail, but it is tracking off towards the east at this point. Look at some of the hail tracks on this particular storm. There's Fort Hancock, and you know, we're talking about starting to get up to around three inch diameter hail, nearly baseball size hail potentially with this storm. Now, we'll take a look at Doppler radar, some of the other strong storms in the area. That's all coming up. Okay, Doppler. And just to give you an idea of what I-10 looked like in the thick of it around 3.30 this afternoon, we recorded our traffic camera feed. Doppler and Nicole used these very shots to take you through the storm live on air as it rolled through. And if you were caught in this, well, you know you couldn't see much in front of you. Our first alert coverage continues on air and online all evening and overnight. But you don't want to wait for our later newscast. We're on social media around the clock. Follow at ABC7 Breaking on Twitter for first alert updates and on the KVIA.com Facebook page as well. Our Facebook page will keep you in the know, but it's also one way you can show us what you saw today. That's how Julian Chavez shared this video from the Montwood High School area. A blue sky on one side, but he pans over and he shows us the storm activity. Pretty amazing out there. It really was. If you look at the east side versus the west side, completely different scenario this afternoon. Another view of the storm, thanks to Vanessa Maesa. She snapped this pic in Clint and shared it with us. It almost looks like a massive fire in the background and poppies, but that's actually ice and hail. And if you post pics and vids to your own page, use the hashtag ABC7FirstAlert. That's how we're putting together a slideshow of viewer pictures at KVI.com. You may even see yours live tonight on ABC 7 at 9 on the CW with Bob Harp. And we have a lot of work ahead of us tonight. We have multiple crews in the field working the storm damage at this very moment. Reports of broken windows at homes in Socorro. And as you saw, the muddy floodwaters in Sparks. We're also watching out for more storms, so look for live reports with new video and information tonight at 9 on the CW and at 10 here on ABC7. Remember, first alert coverage is only on ABC7, and we're keeping it in place until at least tomorrow. There's now an unofficial deal shifting gears now. There's un a deal now, an official deal now. With the Children's Hospital and the County Hospital, University Medical Center, our complete coverage of that next.